All right, I'm gonna repeat that. All right, guys, this training today is all about open house strategy. It's gonna be a mastermind open discussion. I have some bullet points that I wanna go through. Um, and then I'm gonna want you guys' feedback because you guys are all doing open houses out there. So it's great that we mastermind. And, and I'll give you some direction as well. So there's gonna be different areas we're gonna cover to have an effective open house. Number one is going to be, what is the intention or what is the mindset that we are approaching this open house with, right? We're not just showing up, just saying, oh, I'm just going to show up and do an open house. There has to be some sort of intention um, going out there. What is our setup process like? Or when we're going to do an open house, how are we setting up so that we have the best possible outcome? Um, how are we going about registering people, capturing their information? Um, what is our approach to the clients or to the buyers who walk into the open house? How are we approaching them? In what manner? What questions are we asking? What are we saying? Are we just letting them roam around? Different things like that. Um, what are some items of value? What are items of value that we can give anybody who shows up to an open house? And then what are some closing questions that you can ask while you're talking to these clients? to try to get them to the next step, whether it's booking an appointment, making an offer, whatever it might be. And then what does our follow-up process look like um, when we're following up with leads, all right? So we're gonna, we're gonna talk through this, guys, all of us. So I want all you guys, if you have, if you're sitting down, pull out a pen and pull out a paper because I want you guys to take notes because if you take notes, this is how it's really gonna resonate with you. Um, so number one is intention. So when we show up to an open house, what is our intention? Why are we doing an open house? Who would like to, to share? What are your, what's your thoughts? I will. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Yeah, well, for me, the open house is important to connect with possibly buyers that, you know, are hot looking, currently looking, don't have a realtor. So I want to meet them. And then hopefully there's neighbors around that may think about selling soon. So I want to connect with them and build that relationship. So that's ultimately my goal if I'm going to spend, you know, go to open house. Awesome. So connect with buyers who are coming to the open house, connect with potential sellers in the area, neighbors who may want to sell down the line. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's, it's to create some sort of opportunity, right? So we're going to meet these people. And then our goal is to walk away with either capturing their information so we can nurture them, um, follow up, book an appointment. That's the intention. Anybody else want to add to that? What is the intention? What is your intention when you come into an open house? Is there anything else that wasn't said there? Any other ideas? And just feel free to unmute yourself, guys, and, and, and give me some feedback. Uh, setting okay. the appointment. What was that? Setting the appointment. Setting an appointment. Yeah, that's, that's another one, right? So when we go out, let's just, we'll stop right there. So we have, we have to have a game plan, right? When we're going out to an open house, it isn't just like show up and put some signs out. We got to come out there with an intention. So I like what both Diana and Kayla said is we're trying to connect with people buyers who are walking in, um, whether they have an agent or not, doesn't matter, right? Because we already know that just because you have an agent, quote unquote, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stay with that agent or you're always going to do business with that agent, um, right? So your job is to connect with people and build relationships and see where you can take that relationship. And Kayla mentioned to book an appointment, right? There needs to be a specific outcome we are looking for. So it should be either you capture information, which now you can follow up with these people, or you try to set an appointment right there on the spot, right? And it's important that we understand that intention because you may go to an open house and you think all you have to do is just get people to sign up. You're not thinking like, hey, I can ask them if they want to set an appointment right now, right? So I know it sounds simple, guys, but trust me, there's a lot of agents doing open houses where... They just go out there and think that they're just there to show the property, right? They're not specifically saying, this is my goal to meet with X amount of people or to book X amount of appointments from today's open house, right? 
So write down whatever comes to your mind, guys, right there. Whatever you take away from this, what is your intention, right? When you go out to these open houses. Feel free to drop questions, guys. Raise your hand, questions, comments. Uh, I want this to make sure we're, I want to make sure we're, we're masterminding on this. How about setup, guys? Setup. Who thinks they got a decent setup? Like they go out to an open house and they got a kind of a way they set up the open house in their favor. Anybody want to share? Me and me and Juliana, we bring out a little cute little table and we have like she has flyers of estimates of how much the payments would be for the house with just like an interest rate. And then I also bring flyers with comparables of how to sell in the neighborhood. OK, so those, are, those right there are items of value. Right. So I want to distinguish items of value versus how do you actually physically set up the open house? Right. Is there a certain amount of signs you want to put out? Is there, do you show up at a certain time? That's more what I'm looking for. Physically, how do you set up, right? Are you showing up an hour before? Are you turning the lights on? Are you not turning the lights on? Do you have snacks? Do you not have snacks? It's more of like, what are you doing to prep and make sure that you set up the open house so that it's as smoothly as possible? I show up uh, 30 to an hour before. Okay. Um, set up the signs and then um, make sure that like, like you said, the lights are on and then have snacks, waters. And then I have my own like pens and like little advertising with my information in there. Um, yeah, that's what I do. And what is the purpose of that? What do you, what do you want the clients to experience when they come in or what do you want them to think of you when they see you? As their real estate, that I'm knowledgeable or their real estate agent or hopefully they come with me or set an appointment. <laughs> okay. So showcasing who you are, that you're knowledgeable, giving them some sort of value. And essentially what you're doing is you're promoting your brand, right? Your specific brand of you, even though, you know, we're a team and it's PRG, but each one of you guys, you're ultimately representing yourself and how you do business, right? So I want that... I want that to, to stick with you guys is when you show up to an open house, you are representing yourself and what your business is like, right? You're giving people a glimpse of what it's like to work with you. I have like these little goodie bags as well, like with my business card, a pen, and like a, just a snack. Okay. About. And are you doing that the night before? You're getting those ready? How many are you taking? Give me some yeah, specific. well, I, I have them already. Um, so whenever I have open houses, that I have them already. And then I said, like, thank you for coming to my open house and, like, my phone number. Okay, perfect. So Alessandra said, getting there early, right, 30 minutes to an hour early. I would recommend for all you guys, you get there at least an hour early. Um, getting there an hour early allows enough time to put signs out. If you want to put signs out the night before, or even several hours before is good as well. But getting there at least an hour early allows some room in case anything comes up, right? Because there could be times when you're at an open house and something comes up, oh, the light's not working, or I'm, I can't get into the property or the lockbox is not working. I, we've had some crazy stories where it's like people are there and they're showing up last minute and then something goes wrong and they don't have enough time to fix the, the situation and there's clients already showing up to the open house. Right. So the setup needs to happen far in advance. Right. You need to make sure at least an hour before. Right. You already had your coffee. You already, you know, showered. You're already dressed. You're ready to go. You're if you're a girl, your makeup's already done. If you wear makeup, if you're a dude, you already combed your hair. Right. Like there's none of that. I'm getting ready at the property. It's showing up an hour in advance so that you have time to also come into the property without stress. Right. Because when you're rushing and you're trying to do things last minute. You're stressed out, right? It creates that, that additional pressure. So I want to reiterate that your setup needs to happen way in advance. If you're at the property, you know, when it starts, if the open house starts at 12 and you're getting there at 1145, you're late. You're really late, right? You need to be there. If it starts at 12, you need to be there at 11, right? Be there at 11. Your signs are already out. Um, 
And you have enough signs too. That's the other thing I want to bring up right now is that we have signs in our office, guys, that are for, um, for you guys to use in case you don't have signs. But going forward now, everybody needs to buy their own signs now, right? Because you're going to want to put out as many signs as possible. We only have a limited amount of signs that are there just as a courtesy for you guys to use that, that are team signs. But the team signs don't have your name on them or nothing like that. It just says open house, PRG, right? You're going to want signs that have your name, your phone number, all that stuff. And you want to have at least eight to 10 signs per open house. This way you can spread them out. Most people can see you right throughout the neighborhood. You can put them on all the major streets, all the corners. You can double up on corners, right? This is your time to brand yourself. So this is a challenge for all you guys is if you want signs, please get with me after and we'll get DJ to design some for you and we can order you your own signs. We'll design them for you and get the order in, but you got to pay for them basically. But now these are your signs. You're not having to worry about Hey, who has the sign? Did you bring them back to the office? Someone left them in their car. You're now responsible for your own signs, right? This is your toolbox, your tool belt. Um, if there's any other thing you want to set up, like Alessandra is saying, she has little goodie bags that are specific to her and her name. These are all good investments for you guys to, to make into your business, right? All right, cool. Um, Blanca, what about when you do an open house? What are you doing at the property? Like what's some, some key basics of how to make, make sure the property is presentable? Yeah, always get there early, guys, because you want to make sure you're opening up blinds, you're op turning on all the lights, staging furniture. Most of our stagers have light bulbs and the little lamps. If there's no um, recess lighting in the room, turn on those lamps. There's a lot of times where you walk into the rooms and the lamps are there and they're just off. It just creates a nice, warm, inviting environment. I always bring candles. I turn on a scented candle uh, with me. And I also bring like a little bowl with candies or something and just make sure everything's ready and also play some music. Bring your laptop, play some music. If there is a TV there, maybe connect it, stream it to the TV. But if you can't bring your laptop, bring a little boom box, a pill, just so you're creating a nice um, welcome environment when people are walking through, through the open house. Yeah. Yeah. And if you notice anything out of place, there's an open house we went to and there was a couple of roaches on the floor, pick them up. Like, look for that kind of stuff. Walk it, walk all the rooms, walk the bathrooms, walk the garage. You don't want to be walking it when you guys uncover something. That is the worst and most uncomfortable feeling. So make sure you walk it and you're going through all the rooms and not leaving anything untouched. If there's a shed and it's unlocked, look in there. Because the worst thing that can happen is you go and open it and you find something that's not very pleasant. So just make sure you know the condition and everything that's there. And if there's something that doesn't belong, get a napkin, pick it up, remove it. Yeah. Yeah. The bathroom as well, guys. Sometimes people use the bathroom. Maybe, yes. someone, maybe someone showed the house and they left yeah. surprise for you in the toilet. Like let, yep. it happens. <laughs> yes, it does. Yes, it does. Um, We actually, I'm going to share a story. It's not a pleasant story. It was actually <laughs> our seller who did that. And, um, it was just like, well, I had to have a conversation and they played it off. Like they had no idea who had done it, but we knew. <laughs> so please, even though, you know, sometimes sellers don't know, just do that, lift the lid. And if you need to just flush it, just make sure everything is presentable. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to remember guys, this is a representation of you, even though this is not your house, yep. but whoever walks in, they're saying, well, this is how you presented the house to me, right? Mm -hmm. So ultimately, if you don't do anything about it, or if you don't at least go double check, you're, that falls on you at the end of the day, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, so that's, and that's where getting there early is going to help with that. Because if it's last minute and, it's, and the open houses are starting to get busier, right? And you're going to see as the weather gets nicer, they're going to be busier and busier. And sometimes you don't have time you know, to go check stuff. If you show up right when it's about to start and there's a bunch of people already waiting to come in. Yes. Right? Yes. You it don't happens, want to be scrambling because then you're all flustered. You're scrambling and you're not even able to communicate or really connect with clients because you're just so worried about doing everything that should have been done. Yep. 
Um, so setup, also having your laptop, right? I think pretty much everyone has their laptop. Bring your laptop to the open house. Be able to have that on, be able to have maybe the property website up, um, be able to have maybe the MLS up if you wanna pull up other properties that are available or comparables, right? But, but it just shows the, the clients who come in that you're prepared, right? You're prepared to have a conversation with them. You're prepared to give them items of value. You took, there was some thought that was put into how you set up the open house, right? You, just, you didn't just roll out of bed, get dressed and then show up and wing it, right? There's some actual thought that went into it. So preparation guys starts the day before, not the day of, right? The day before double checking with the team, whatever it is that you guys need, whether you need snacks or whatever we're doing for you, making sure that's all handled the day before, not the day of, because the, the, our staff guys, our staff doesn't work on the weekends, right? So if you're scrambling on a Saturday morning, Hey, where are the signs at? Hey, where's the iPad? Hey, you're late already, right? Our staff is, they checked out five o'clock on, uh, on Friday, right? 5 p.m. on Friday, you know? And so it, it's, it wouldn't be nice for us to call and bug them when you just weren't prepared, right? You have something else, Blanca? Yeah, um, we're actually really spoiled with our staff, you guys, because Caleb, Alicia, Andrea, they usually make sure everything is there at the property in a, in a crate, in a box. And usually the iPad is there, the Madelines, the waters, your flyers. They're super diligent and they're super, it's awesome that we don't have to worry about that. So in reality, all it takes is on a Thursday, checking in with them. Hey, are is this at the Oakland office, at the Cherry office? Then they'll most of the time tell you, hey, it's already there at the property. So even a little step less for you guys to do. Just worry about the signs. Make sure you have your signs. Make sure you're prepared. You're ready, um, and you're and you have everything you need for your sign-ins. Because, like Enrique said, it wouldn't be fair for them that you're calling them on the weekend or the day of. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, let's go forward with registration. Right, getting people to register and enter their information. Any strategies, guys, behind that? Anything that you have done that has been effective to get people to register and leave their info. What's on? Dewey, what do you got, Dewey? Um, usually I just say, uh, I just welcome them in, uh, ask them to sign in and uh, said that that's how the seller keep foot traffic on how many people come and uh, and see the home. That's, and then while they're signing in, I explain information about the home. Like, hey, this is the three bed, two bath, 9,111 uh, 9, square feet of the whole, you know, uh, whole place all together. So while they're signing in, I explain the facts. And after they finish, I just welcome to walk around and ask me if, if there's any question needed to be asked. Got it. Okay. So stating, hey, guys, please sign in. The seller has asked everybody to sign in. And that's how the seller is able to keep track of, you know, who came into their home and how many people showed up. That's a crucial step, right? Because just assuming that someone is going to sign in is not always the case, right? There's some people that will walk in and they have their own agenda. They just completely avoid signing in. They start walking around or they just start asking questions or whatever. But remember, it's our open house, right? You are letting them into your open house. So you need to control that part of it. So a good strategy, guys, is standing by the front door as kind of like the doorman or the door, the door person, right? And if someone wants to come in, you just simply can hand them the iPad or whatever you're using to sign in, right? Hopefully it's like an iPad or something. And you can say, hey, welcome. Are, are you guys here for the open house, right? Are you here for the open house? Oh yeah, great, all right, sounds good. Let's go ahead and get you guys sent, get you guys signed in and then we can let you tour the property, right? And then you just hand, like my phone, you just hand it to them. Um, you know, the seller just asked everybody to sign in so we can, you know, keep track of who came by and, and, and stuff like that. Versus you like in the property, in the kitchen or somewhere, letting people just come in the front door. And then it's a lot harder at that point to stop them because they're already looking around, right? Mm -hmm. 
So by you setting up by the front door, you essentially become like the gatekeeper on whether they get in or not, right? Raise your hand if anybody's ever been to a nightclub, All right? Do you just walk in to a nightclub? Sometimes, just kidding. And if you're with me, if you're VIP, maybe you do, <laughs> right? But just kidding. No, you gotta get in line, you gotta go to the front, they wanna see your ID, right? They might pat you down if you're in the hood, right? Who knows, right? <laughs> but, um, right, or they're see if you're on the guest list, but there's a process, right? And we don't question that at all. We just do it because you, that's what they set up, right? So think of the open house as your nightclub and you set the rules. You're the guy, you're the bouncer at the front door. You decide if they come in or not. And you just assume like, hey, this is the way we do it. This is the way it goes. Go ahead and please sign in, right? Obviously, professionally and, and stuff like that, you want to greet people, make them feel welcome. But just go ahead and hand them the iPad. Yeah, go ahead and sign in, please, right? <laughs> and it'll happen. Um, anybody else? Anybody have trouble getting people to sign in? Any situations where you've had trouble? What if someone, what if someone says they don't want to sign in? Then what would you do? Anybody ever run into that? I've had a case where uh, it was a wife and husband and they were taking turns. So they would like walk through the home and they didn't want to put down their phone number. So then they just put down their email and, um, you know, just following up with them allowed me that access to uh, start touring homes with them. And I'm still working with them. But if you don't ask for the information at all and you don't follow up, then you, you'll never know if you would be able to work with that client. Got it. Okay. But have you had the case where someone doesn't want to sign in and you've had to, you've had to deal with that? Any, have you had that Connie or anybody else? Uh, I have, and you know, you just try and nurture them. You share your contact information and keep trying to provide them value because that's, you can't harass someone for their information. Okay. So you, so you let them come in then without signing in. That's, that's what you, you did. Uh, we still ask for their email and say, hey, you know, we just have to keep track of how many people. I've never had anyone say outright, like, no. Okay. Okay, that's more what I was looking for, if anybody's dealt with that. Josh, you had something? The only time I've ever encountered people not wanting to enter is if, like, their agent's, like, right behind them or if the agent walks in first. That's probably, like, the only time I've ever encountered that. I kind of just make it – I kind of just put it on the, the sellers that they just want to make sure, like, how Dewey kind of said that and Connie – kind of elaborate. I just like for the seller's discretion or, you know, they just want to make sure that we're doing our jobs, that there's traffic and kind of keep notes on what's going on with the activity. And usually they're pretty cool with that. The only time it's really just if they have an agent with them. Okay. Um, okay, good stuff. That's, those are good feedbacks, right? So if they have an agent or if they just are a little hesitant to sign in, what do you do? Right. So if they're hesitant to sign in and they're just like a, like a couple or a person by themselves, it's up to you to decide to let them in or not, but I wouldn't let them in if they don't sign in, right? You can say, hey, for safety reasons, because you never know who's coming in the property. These could be strangers that are scouting the property because they intend to break in and rob the property when no one's there. That's happened. We had a guy one time come in and he was tour he was in the rooms and you can hear like drawers opening. And me and Rob were doing the open house and we had to go in there and kick him out. We're like, hey, excuse me, you know, why are you opening the drawers? And it was an occupied property, right? So we were trying to not to follow him and give him some space, but he was acting really suspicious and opening like drawers and stuff like that. And um, so we stayed on him and then we're just like, sir, you have to leave, right? And we, we, we escorted him out and he left and you could tell like he was up to something. He was trying to do something. So... When all else fails, if someone doesn't want to sign in, you need to say, hey, guys, you know, for safety reasons and for seller's discretion, they do want to know who entered their property. Um, if you don't want us to contact you, that's fine. But we do need we do. It is required that you sign in and, and put your information down. Right. And that's all you got to do. And if someone doesn't want to sign in, guys, I wouldn't let them in, to be honest. Right. Like if 
you got to understand if you're going to come into a stranger's home and you don't want to identify yourself, there's no good enough reason to not want to identify yourself if you're coming into a stranger's home, right? There can't be possibly a reason why you wouldn't want to let people know who you are if you're walking into a random home, right? So stick to your guns, guys. And if you don't feel comfortable with some, someone coming in, don't let them come in. Um, if, they, if they have an agent, then have their agent sign in for them, right? That's fine. Hey, at least them or their representative can sign in. Um, I wouldn't just take the business. You can take a business card if you want, right? If that's easier for you guys, just to take the agent's business card instead of having them fill out the thing. So that's an option. Or just say, okay, hey, I see you're with your clients. Go ahead and sign in for them. And just hand the agent the iPad or whatever you're using and have the agent list their information there. And then you can follow up with the agent and, and get some feedback, right? But not having them sign in at all, missed opportunity there. Missed opportunity to connect with the agent to see if they want to make an offer. Missed opportunity to connect with that client to see if they, if they want help with this property or with a different property. Any questions, guys, on getting people registered? Go ahead, Josh. Well, the, I just wanted to ask, so in your spiel, kind of like letting them know, you know, to sign in for the, you know, the sellers want to make sure of the activity, would you just note and slip in there then just for safety precautions? We just need you guys to sign in as well to them. I would only say that if it came up and they were being combative. Okay. That wouldn't be on my spiel, right? So my spiel would be like, hey guys, welcome to the open house. My name's Enrique. Um, you know, we'll be letting you in. Um, go ahead and, uh, and, you know, we'll give you a tour right now. Go ahead and just, you know, sign in, enter your information. Um, here you go. Here's the iPad. And then if you're like, well, I don't really want to put my information down. Hey, totally understand. You know, we're not going to spam you or anything like that. But, you know, for safety precautions and per the seller's request, they want to know who came into their property and how many people came in and also who came in. Right. You know, we're just trying to keep things safe. So go ahead and sign your information here. And then I would just go like this and give them the iPad. And if they said, yeah, I don't really want to put my information down. Hey, I totally understand. It's up to you. Um, in order to come and tour the property, we do require everyone to sell to sign in. That's per the seller's requests. You know, so what would you like to do? See, I'm keeping it totally chill. I'm not mm -hmm. getting upset. Put it back on them, right? Blanca. And I think, Josh, um, if we make it seem like it's a big deal then they'll take it like a big deal. But if you just make it seem like super casual, like Enrique said, hey, welcome. That's same thing I do. If you wouldn't mind while you sign in, I'll give you some feedback on the property. I'm glad you guys made it out, whatever. Like, it's not a big deal. It's part of the process to get in. It's, you know, what like a whatever type of thing. They'll go ahead and sign in. Yeah. Yeah. You got to think guys, customer service as well, right? Like you don't ever want to be rude. You always want to be the bigger person. You always want to be the most professional. There's people out there that are just jerks, right? And they're going to be rude with you and they might say something to you and you need to maintain your cool because at the end of the day, you are representing how you do business. Just imagine like if a buyer comes in and he doesn't want to sign in and there's also a seller right there who's listening on how you're handling the situation and they see how you handle it gracefully, very professionally. And that buyer decides to walk away because they're being a jerk and they don't want to sign in. That seller's probably like, hey, I'm glad you did that, right? I live next door. You're protecting our neighborhood. Um, that was very good how you handled that, right? And that can be a brownie point that you earn with that seller or that neighbor who eventually may want to sell their home and they see how you conduct the open house, right? So just remember, people are watching, guys. And there's cameras in the properties a lot of times as well, right? There's those nanny cams. There's the ring cams the seller of the actual home may be listening to how you're handling stuff as well, right? Dewey, did you have a, a question or comment? Oh yeah, I have a, a one time, uh, a, an old couple come in, but they don't have an email. So what, in, in that case, if they don't have an email, what do we put, uh, if they are unable to sign in like all the information? Put a phone number, right? Put their phone number. If they don't have an email, you can just put no email. Just have them put none under email, but uh, you at least need their phone number or their email or both, right? Try to get both, mm -hmm. but at the very, at the very least, you need either one email or phone number. 
All right. Thank you. No problem. Um, okay. Next, guys. What's your approach in the open house? So you get someone comes in, they sign in. Now they're going to tour the property. What's the mindset? Are you just letting them walk around and roam around? Um, give me some feedback on that, and I'll give you some, you know, some my advice as well. What are you guys doing when people walk into the property? Are you just giving them a brief introduction? Or are you following them throughout the house? What have you guys been doing? Francisco, you worked in open house, right? Angie, let's get some participation. Guys, Teddy, have you worked in open house? Josh, what do you got, bro? I'll go. So the system that me and uh, Dewey did yesterday is basically kind of what he talked about as far as when they come in, we start running through like the details and the features of the property. Um, and then we kind of let them go and do their own thing. And then we would circle and meet them back either in the backyard or the kitchen, kind of ask them what they're thinking, what their thoughts are, you know, are they able to like, you know, I would, I, I like to ask them like, you know, if there's a few things on their list of like must haves, what would it be? And then they'll probably, they'll tell you what they want. Right. And I said, does this property check any of those on your list? And then that's when you start getting into like a deeper conversation. Right. And they'll kind of tell you, oh, you know, it's not really ideally what we're looking for, or it is right. Um, if it's not ideally, and this isn't the house, then that's when I would start to talk to them about other properties in the area, trying to dig deeper. Um, and then a lot of people, they just really ramble on about what they want. And then you can start talking about, especially since we're all looking at inventory every day, right? Start bringing up other properties, asking if they're open to these type of properties. Um, and then when, after them, when they let you know about exactly what they're looking for, you add, I would kind of like start talking to them. Have they made an offer on a house? How long have they been touring to kind of engage? Um, usually the, the, Three that I got uh, connected with uh, pretty good on um, Saturday, I ended up booking uh, buyer consoles with them because they that was the first properties that they had toured. So it seemed like a lot of people were kind of getting back into the market. A lot of younger couples were looking back into the market as well, too. Awesome, man. That's, that's good insight right there. Um, I, I want to point out what Josh is saying, right? So let's break it down. The client comes in, you give them the quick highlight of the property, right? Hey guys, you know, it's a three bed, two bath, 1200 square feet. It's listed at, you know, a million 50, uh, 9,000 square foot lot. Uh, recently, this was done, remodeled, stuff like that. You're giving them the quick bullet points of the property, right? Feel free to take a look. I'm here to answer any questions. I'll go ahead and circle back with you once you guys have taken a look at the property. So you're kind of setting the stage, right? Of, hey, I'm, I'm Josh. Welcome to my open house. Let me give you the quick rundown. Boom, boom, boom. Go ahead and take a look. Let's circle back towards the end, right? I like that approach, guys, because it's a balance of informative. You're giving them good information, but then you're not like hovering over the client, right? As they're touring every single room, because that can be uncomfortable as well. When you have just an agent, like you can feel them watching you, right? Like in the back of your head. So you don't want to be that agent that is just coming off super salesy. You got to remember that you're there to build a relationship because at the end of the day, there's a very, very high probability that they will not buy that house, right? Think about how many people come to an open house. We might have 20 to 30 groups a day sometimes, right? Times two days, right? On one weekend. So in one weekend, we could have 50 or 60 groups of people come to the open house, but we only accept one offer on a property, right? So that means there's 50 to 60 other people that are still going to be out there looking for homes just because not every single home that you're hosting is not going to match up to most people's needs or they may they just may not be able to compete with the offers or they whatever it might be. So your job is to build enough rapport and connect with them so that you can now take them to another property potentially, right? Or to book that buyer consultation right? Or to get them on the line with the lender, right? And take them to the next step. So when you know that, then you're not just trying to push this property. You're more going to be interested in what do they need? What are their needs? How long have they been looking for? What can you do to, to benefit them, to give them about some value? Um, go ahead, Josh. What I was going to say too, is when you're just talking to them or what I found like 
super uh, uh, like helpful this week is or this weekend at this open house is just kind of letting them talk right and then one of the couples that uh, me and Dewey had talked to they mentioned that they really like the top section that the basically the second floor at Rob's place is like its own like level mm. right and they're thinking about renting out the bottom um and I talked to them probably a good 15 minutes right of uh, are they looking to just rent a property do they, they want something with an ADU unit um they started asking questions about the property there, like being able to like flatten the ground out more and add something there. And then the couple um, switched over the whole conversation and kind of said, you know, like, I know we're looking at a single, single family home and like a rental property, but ideally um, we would like to do like a multifamily or like a duplex. And then I kind of, that's when I had asked Dewey about his coming up and I'm going to talk to them today about setting up a showing to go to Dewey's uh, upcoming um, property. There you go. So, right. So by you having those questions, right, that conversation, and you're asking a couple questions that get them to talk, hey, what did you think about the property, right? Uh, hey, a good question to ask someone is, hey, guys, so can you guys see yourself living here? Because that's an open-ended question that's going to get them to tell you the yes, the no, or what they're looking for, what they're not looking for, what they liked, what they didn't like, right? But just by asking someone, hey, can you guys see yourself living here, right? Or, uh, hey, how long have you guys been in the market? What's been your experience so far, right? When you, you don't want to just ask yes or no questions. You want to get questions that promote conversation and getting them to talk, right? What did you guys think about the property? How long have you been in the market for? Um, how many other properties have you guys toured, right? What's your experience been like so far? And then you're going to listen to what they say and then you'll be able to, you know, build off of what they say, right? If they say, hey, I just got started. This is the first property we're looking for. We've looked at, well, then maybe they're not that experienced. Maybe they don't know a lot about how the market is going. That would be a great way to suggest a buyer consultation, right? Maybe they've been outbidded and they're like, yeah, you know, we've been looking for six months now and we keep getting outbidded. Well, that may be a great opportunity to point them towards, um, us finding them something off market or telling them about an upcoming listing that we have, right? Or maybe using our connections to find something for them before it hits the market to avoid competition, right? So there's different, if you ask the right questions, you're going to get answers that allows you to navigate and, and create some value in that conversation there. Now, like you said, Josh, as once he started asking the questions, they revealed that they're looking for like a multifamily or something with rental income potential, you can now say, hey, well, hey, we have a listing coming up, a duplex that you may want to take a look at. This is why we need to meet now, right? And I think us having like, because I said it wasn't like on the market yet, right? It's a, it's like a shadow property, I guess you could say, right? Is that we, once I started talking to him about that and he asked me questions like, you know, when is it going to go on the market and stuff like that? And I told him, you guys could be the first to take a tour at it. You know, and if you guys like it, you guys want to move forward, then we can go like that. And he he seemed like he liked that better, right? That he wouldn't have to do all this competition stuff, but like just being the first to be able to see it, um, he was like really uh, excited about it. Yep. And every time you're now able to talk to that client again on the phone or meet them in person, you're building rapport, building rapport, building rapport. Each interaction uh, solidifies the relationship even more, right? The open house was the first chance for you guys to meet. That's like the first date, right? Now you got to keep building and building, right? You're giving them value. You're calling them. You're taking them out. Now you guys are talking about more stuff in depth. You're getting to know who they are, getting to know their family. Before you know it, there's a relationship built there. And now slowly they see you as their agent, right? The person that is, is there helping them along the journey. So that needs to be your guys' approach, right? With this, this section right here that we're talking about is how do you approach the clients in the open house? It should be coming from a place of service, a place of value, a place of curiosity, right? Trying to understand what their needs and wants are by asking questions, getting them to talk, and being able to provide value throughout that conversation. All right, guys. Uh, got a few more minutes. Guys, we're, come, we're almost done. Um, Let's go to closing questions. How do we close it to the next appointment, right? The same way that we say, hey, when you go show a property like to Zillow, you need to be booking the next appointment, which is either to go 
to make an offer on that property and do an offer consultation or to do a buyer consultation or to meet with the lender or to go show more homes. So how do we close for the appointment? And has anybody been ever, Josh, you said you booked appointments. Has anybody else booked appointments from their open house? And how did you guys close for the appointment? So yeah, I booked I booked uh, three appointments from this weekend. And the reason the one was with Dewey and the the, the couple we talked about the the multi or the uh, multifamily or duplex because mm -hmm. um, he wanted to see what was available. Um, <clears throat> and then two two other couples that um, I ended up booking um, where one of them is really they're a couple that's new to the market. They like the house, um, but they kind of didn't like that the children's like bedrooms were downstairs. Right. And they would have the top one. But I told them they have like a newborn. So I said, you can basically like if you guys wanted to, you have plenty of room to put like the crib and stuff like that upstairs until you guys feel a little bit more better with the either a child sleeping downstairs or we can look at other properties. So once I talked about doing other properties, that's when I set up the buyer console with them, see where they're at. Um, they haven't got like pre-approved or anything. And then the other one that I booked was basically the parents were going to come and do the uh, down payment for the son. Well, the son lives there um, and then he's going to rent out. They're going to rent out the uh, the two um, additional bedrooms or their, what their plan is to do like a rental with their son. Got it. Got it. So to get specific, right, specific uh, tactical strategy that you guys can all take away. So the, the client that says they they have a newborn, right? They like the they liked the property, but they weren't sure because of the two levels. What was the com what was the conversation to get them to go agree to meet with you, right? What did you what did you say? Hey, like let's let's meet for a consultation. Like maybe walk me through that little part. Okay, so for example, like with them, right? They said they may be that house. They love the house, but maybe it's not the one for them be just because they're newborn, right? So I talked to them about other properties and other areas and stuff like that. And then instead of just being like, oh, I'm just going to send you an email of properties, right? I said, have you guys done any, have you guys ever purchased a property? They said, no. I said, have you guys ever like, you know, any of the terms of like, you know, with the contracts or uh, contingencies? They said, no. So I started talking to them about escrow and stuff like that, but like not really diving into it, but just kind of, you know, there's three steps and that we have like a roadmap for our presentation. And they were like, oh, that sounds super interesting. I said, my goal at the end of the day is even if you guys, um, um, you know, if this isn't the home for you, if we can do the console, at least my goal for you at the end is that you guys are more knowledgeable at the end of our 30 minute Zoom, um, you know, and then we can go from there. And they said, all right, cool. There were like 30 minutes, like a walkthrough um, for you just to like basically do like your presentation. Like I'm, I'm totally game for that. Awesome. Good job, man. So I want you guys to hear that, right? He had the conversation. He showed them, the pro let them into the property. Then he circled back to see what they thought. Then it starts opening up the dialogue of what they're looking for, what they liked, what they didn't like. And then he suggested, well, hey, you know, we can always go take a look at some other properties that may fit your needs. And then he asked some follow up questions. Uh, you know, are you guys new to the process or, you know, do you guys know much about how the process works? They said no. And then he navigated to, hey, why don't we do this? Why don't we jump on a consultation? My goal is to advise you, to show you the roadmap, to show you all the different points so that you are knowledgeable. Uh, it's a 30 minute Zoom and I think you guys would get a lot of value from that. Boom, they like it. Now he's gonna do a consultation with them. And, so, and, there's, a, and there's two things that I, I, I said um, that I felt like really worked, right? Is that I say like my team and I, right? We do this free consultation for you guys to benefit, for you guys to gain more knowledge. I felt like that got a good response. And then two, just keeping at like 30 minutes for like a Zoom link, right? Um, super convenient. We're just going to send you guys a Zoom link. We'll jump on for 30 minutes and run through the presentation. Got I it. I feel like it's super convenient for them that they're like, yeah, I'm game for that. So saying my team and I do this as a service for buyers, right? That gave credibility, right? Credibility. Hey, my team and I, this is the free value that we offer. And we do this for buyers. The way he phrased that, build some instant credibility, right? Like this is part of our process. This is how we do business, right? I'm not just making this up on the spot. This is a process that we have that's proven. My team and I do this for buyers. It's a free consultation. This is the goal of that consultation, right? So I want you guys to take that away. You need to work that, that vocabulary uh, into, you know, when you're talking with clients, you need to work that in there. 
And then the second part that he said was he made it easy for them, right? So he took away like, oh, we got to come and meet me. And this is long old thing, a quick 30 minute consultation. I just send you a link. You guys jump on and we'll run through it. And you're going to get a lot of value from it. Because remember, if he was like, well, let's meet and go over the process and do all the paperwork and all this stuff, that sounds like a lot. But when you say, hey, it's a quick, a quick consultation, no more than 30 minutes, you could do it at the convenience of your own home. I'll send you a link, you guys jump on and we'll walk you through it. And you're going to gain a lot of knowledge in a really quick and concise presentation. Now there's not a lot of resistance because you made it easy for them, right? So you got to understand, guys, there's psychology behind this. When you say, hey, let's jump on a quick call or let's jump on a quick consultation or let's talk, let's do a quick chat. Does everyone, is everyone game to do a quick chat or a quick consultation? Or does someone want a long, boring, drawn out presentation, right? They want quick and fast and to the point, right? So you got to say that in your vocabulary, saying that it's quick and easy. Go ahead, Josh. And I would really emphasize to you like a quick Zoom, um, you know, Zoom console for me to run through my presentation, right? Um, because when I said that sometimes, or not this one, but I learned my lesson is that some people think that they're thinking that they need to come to the office and it's like a, like a major inconvenience. So if you just say a quick Zoom link, you guys could just jump on, you know, from the comfort of your guys' own home, then I'm like super game for it. Yeah. That, that's a small detail, right? But saying quick Zoom link because you never know they might be thinking you're talking about coming to the office and they don't want to drive to the office they're busy right but if it's a quick zoom everyone nowadays is used to zoom and video and stuff like that so make sure you're saying that okay um we got five minutes guys five more minutes bear with me uh items of value what are some items of value that you can give people who come into the open house let's brainstorm really quick Let's hear from someone who hasn't spoken yet. Uh, Chris, Maggie, Francisco, Israel, if you can, uh, Teddy, what are some quick items of value? Who would like to go? Uh, Chris, what's an item of value that you can give to a client when they come in? Um, a business card. Uh, gave a couple of people my business card from the open house this weekend. Okay. Business card. Now, I'm going to challenge you. How does your, how, mm -hmm. if I'm a buyer and I walk in, how is your business card valuable to me? Um, if they don't have an agent, they're just first starting out and looking around some homes. Um, you know, I can be that first person that's there to represent them. Okay. I like that. I want you guys to distinguish that just giving someone your business card. Well, anybody can give me their business card, but if you were to say, Hey guys, I'm not sure where you're at in the process. If you don't have an, an agent who is looking out for your interest and someone that can give you all the up-to-date information. I just want to let you know I'm a resource to you. Here's my business card. Because now it went from just handing me a piece of business card, a piece of cardboard paper, to now you're putting value on, if you don't have anybody, this is what I can do for you, right? So Chris, when you hand out your business card, like you just explained right now, make sure you're explaining why they need your business card, what it's going to do for them. See what I'm saying? Got it. Okay. Who else? Who else got the item of value? What's something else that would be valuable to a client when they come to your open house? Israel, what you got? A flyer with uh, different mortgage scenarios. Okay, tell me about that. Yeah, if you provide a flyer of the pro not, not only the property information, but also with a different type of mortgage uh, mortgage scenarios, just like say uh, whether well, mortgage payment will be at a different scenario with a 20% down at this interest rate or a different program. And um, offering also information of, of uh, the loan officer so they can inquire further if they, if they would like to. Absolutely, that's a really, really good one, right? So having the mortgage information ready, right? You can easily get with the lender on our team. They actually have a flyer that they can print out that has different scenarios for you, right? And you're breaking down the different options, different down payments. That's really valuable to someone coming in who has no clue on what the payments would look like on this particular property, right? So if you have a little stack of those already ready to go and it has your information on there, 
that's valuable and your lender's information on there, right? Anything else, Israel, you got? Yes, I just I would like to comment that uh, I heard I was driving, I couldn't comment earlier regarding when uh, we're registering the buyers to come in. Um, I heard some of them were talking, you know, the basic information about the property. Uh, I will suggest that uh, because they're driving to the open house, obviously they look at the information somewhere. So they pretty much have an idea that they're walking into a three bedroom, two bath. And I would suggest rather than tell them this is a three bedroom, two bath again, uh, having a highlight of the property, show up before the open house, learn the property really well, walk around, you know, and then highlight something about the property. All these properties in a cul-de-sac per se, private, you know, very private. So uh, highlight something of the property rather than the specifics. They probably, they have them on their phone because they're obviously picked up, uh, you know, from Zillow or Redfin or any uh, home app that they are using to, to do the home search. So I would just suggest that finding something of, of value of the property or highlight the property uh, other than just the basics three, two or two, one. I like that, man. That's a really, really good point. Guys, Israel, by the way, is new to our team, but he's not new to the industry. Been in the industry for many years, has sold hundreds and hundreds of properties, guys. So he has a wealth of knowledge. If you ever need anything, go to him. But that's a very good point, right? Everyone sees the info on Zillow already. So think of what can I tell you that's not on Zillow, right? And that would be you knowing, having an intimate knowledge of the property, right? Maybe you know that down the street, something's happening down the street, or one just sold, or one's coming up, or in this neighborhood, or in this community, there's a, there's a local event that they do every year, or, uh, or the seller just did this to the property, which you won't really see on Zillow. Let me point this out to you, right? Or the schools, right? There's different things that you can point out that the average consumer won't know, you know, when they just pull up Zillow or Redfin. Right. So I, I like another, that. Another thing is I heard that, you know, get to the open house early. Yes. But also uh, uh, drive around the neighborhood. Look, look around if there's a shopping center, if there's a school, if there's anything that you can highlight. Oh, by the way, there's this mall right here down the street or there's the school down the street. Or, you know, maybe sometimes they have questions like I did an open house in this house. The, the back of it, uh, it was like these parking lots of a shopping center. And nine out of 10 people will ask me what's back there. So good thing that I do, I, I custom to do this and I would drive around. So I went in the back and I noticed that it was a church uh, and the parking lot belonged to a, to a big church. So I would just let him know, hey, it's a church. So it made me look a little better knowing a little bit of the location of the, of the puppy and what was around. Yeah. That's good stuff, man. Good stuff, Israel. Thanks for, for your contribution. You're welcome. Um, okay. Um, we're coming up on time, by, guys. So I want to quickly go over a couple more items of value. What's valuable to, to a client, right? Knowing about the inspection reports, right? If you know what's on there, right? If you know things that have just been recently done, like if the, if the seller just fixed all the termite work, or they just did a complete remodel, or if the AC is brand new. So knowing specifics about the actual property is important. Um, knowing what the comparable sales are looking like, like knowing if there's any other homes being sold in the neighborhood that are either active, pending, just sold, knowing the information on those, that's valuable as well, because you can say, hey, I know the market. I know the area. Maybe we can meet and I can go over some of the recent activity and see what a good offer would be on this property. Um, the other thing too is knowing what other homes are for sale that maybe are similar or comparable or maybe in a different neighborhood. What other inventory is out there? What stuff's coming to the market, coming soon? Off-market properties. Those are all really valuable to clients as well because they may not know that stuff just coming off, off Zillow, right? Um, anything else, any block, anything you can think of? Um, yeah, definitely knowing all of that, everything you talked about, cause it just lets them, let them know you're active, you're full-time, you're in the market. 
Um, another thing that's really valuable is when you're connecting and trying to set up that next appointment is just saying, hey, what a lot of my clients really appreciate is I usually go on a Zoom and we review all the reports and seller disclosures together and I'm going through each item with you and answering any questions. That way you have a full understanding of the condition of the home. Yep. Yeah, so that one's a real important one. And I feel like once I say that, they feel like, oh, she's going to help us. She's not going to just send us information and let us figure it out on our own. She's going to take the time to go through the stuff with us. Yeah. Yeah. And that that leads into the last thing, guys. Bear with me for three more minutes. Following up, right? When you follow up with clients, if you had a great conversation there at the property, you need to take some notes somewhere, right? If you have it on your iPad, Put some notes on there. Hey, this client, they're the ones with the baby. They're the ones that were looking for the two-story. They're the ones that were looking for the, the bigger lot, right? When you have those intimate conversations, now when you follow up with them, you want to bring that information up, right? Hey, it's Enrique. You know, we met the other day. I remember you were telling me about your newborn, come, you know, or whatever it might be. I remember you telling me you needed something with a, a bigger lot. You know, I may have a property in mind that will fit your needs, right? You want to come to them with something of value, right? Or maybe they really like this property. So now you're following up to set up the consultation to go over the comps, go over the disclosures, right? So any follow-up that you do with your leads, if you're just calling saying, hey, it's Francisco. I don't know if you remember me. We met like three weeks ago at an open house. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to book an appointment versus calling someone later on that day, right? You have the open house, you took notes, calling them after the open house that same day, and saying, hey, it's me. We met earlier. We had a great conversation. This is, let me recap. Let's go ahead and book that consultation, right? Or let's go ahead and um, meet and see some more properties. Or let's get you on the line with my lender because this is what we had talked about, right? So your follow-up needs to always be based off whatever the interaction was there. For you to have the best chance of booking that appointment, you need to have some meat. You need to have some context. You can't just go in cold they're not going to remember you because if they went to your open house, they went to three other open houses as well. Right. So you got to stand out. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, we're up on time, guys. Thanks so much for your patience today. I hope you guys got some nuggets really quick. I'm going to post in Slack right now. What was your biggest takeaway from today's training? If you can please just reply and give me your big away, your biggest takeaway to today's training. So I'm posting in Slack, just hit a reply on there. What was your biggest takeaway from today's open house training? All right, guys, I'll go ahead and turn this off, but just hit reply. Drop me a quick little comment in the chat in our Slack. And we'll see you soon, guys. Let me know if you need something.